because <laughs> make the commitment to yourself that Gladys is going to do what makes Gladys happy, that Gladys is going to do what makes her feel fulfilled, that Gladys is just going to do Gladys regardless of what's going on. Like it's important for you to always choose yourself, choose what makes you happy regardless of how other people feel. Cause you know, you got to stop putting other people's feelings before your own. That's your emotion. Gonna lead you down the path. You ain't got no business going down there. But you got to make the decision that Gladys is about to see him walk in Gladys season because Gladys deserve it. Fuck everybody else. Stop letting people's feelings dictate your pocket. Dictate your life. Mm-mm. Don't do that. Okay, no more of that. Hmm. It's a spiritual year, baby. Whatever you want, you can have as long as you're doing what you're supposed to be doing. You follow your intuition. Like, this is a very, very spiritual year. You want that 15K a month? Baby, you can get 30K a month because that 15K a month going to come from that podcast when you actually set it up. And, and, and you know what I'm saying? Whatever you want, you can have. You just got to listen to yourself. You have to listen to yourself and walk away from all these folks trying to control your destiny. Trying to, they're trying to control you. And in turn, trying to control you, they're trying to control your destiny. You let other people control your destiny, you're going to be missing out on a lot. Listen to yourself. Choose yourself. Go forward, not backwards. Reap what you have sown, child. Don't just sit and have your blessings hanging because you're too scared to go get them because you're so worried about, you know what I'm saying, the past and what people think. And mm -mm. You deserve everything that's coming to you. You just better start believing it. Love on yourself, baby. You the only one that matters. This, baby, this is a movie and you as the star. You got to stop sitting here letting dog on additional cast members start shining in your, in your movie, baby. You got to stop. <laughs> oh, Lord. I'm sorry. Okay, I hear you loud and clear. Just expand your creativity and expand your view. Stop putting yourself in this box. Put yourself out there. Authentic as Gladys. That's not here to just influence, that it's also here to inspire. So keep that in the back of your mind, too. Thank you, Charity. You're welcome, darling. I appreciate you, and I'll be... Live your life, Gladys. All right, I'm going to live my ain't life. Gonna tell you no more. Hmm? I ain't going to tell you no more. Live your life, child. Too young and pretty. Live your life. Okay. <laughs> hey, YouTube fam. It's your girl, Gladys. Welcome back to the channel. I really miss y'all. I know it's been a minute since I have done long form anything on this channel. It's been eight months, which I am low key a little bit embarrassed about considering how consistent I was before where I was posting two and three times a week. But y'all have not let up. Y'all continue to show up for me and find me on Instagram, on TikTok. When I post in the YouTube community tab, you all still respond. And overall, just show me that you're still here, which means a lot, especially with all that's gone on this year. This is a life update video because I want y'all to know, you know, personally what's been going on with me, why I've been absent, and how I plan on moving forward. Oh, and if you are new to the channel, my name is Gladys. I've been creating content on YouTube for almost five years. January 21st is my five year anniversary. So I'm really excited about that. I need to figure out what I'm gonna do to celebrate the birthday. But yes, I've been doing hair, fashion, and overall lifestyle content for five years. So that's really exciting. So first, I want to start about the shift with my brand. As you can see, we are no longer Is That Your Hair? We are Forever Gladys. Is That Your Hair started literally because I love wigs. And I started reviewing wigs back in 2019. That really helped propel my channel. But over time, after about two years, I realized I wanted to showcase other things such as fashion, vlogs, and other lifestyle content. And it turns out you all wanted to see that from me too. And I realized is that your hair just didn't fit anymore. It was like two mismatched puzzle pieces. It wasn't working. And I racked my brain for like almost a year trying to think of a new name and finally it just came to me forever gladys because i really wanted to tap into the essence of me and always remind myself that like no matter what's going on even with everything that happened this year i still want to remain true to myself and true to 
you know, what makes me, me, essentially. And I realized too that my audience, you all rock with me. Yes, y'all are here for my hair and places I travel to and things like that, but you also really care about what I have to say because it's coming from me. So that is why we changed the name and now we are the Forever Family. So if you hear me refer to y'all as Forever Fam, that's what I'm talking about. And if you're new here, welcome. The next thing I wanna discuss is comparison, okay? Because I have been dealing with that more this year than I ever have before. I think I always prided myself on feeling like, you know, like, oh, like I'm in my own lane, I'm doing my own thing. Yes, there are lots of people who may be doing hair and fashion content, but I'm fine with doing what I'm doing. But since I took this break from YouTube, I just felt a little bit more insecure, especially when I see some of my peers who may be surpassing me in followers or they're getting like really amazing opportunities. And part of me is just like, wow, like I'm so happy for them, like because there are things that me and these people may have been talking about since I started and now things are happening for them. But another part of me was just kind of like, damn Gladys, why can't you just like get off your ass and do some of the same things that you want to accomplish on your bucket list? Like what's going on? I had to really grant myself grace when I started having these type of negative thoughts because I realized like I'm going through a major life transition. That's what this whole year has been. And I kept expecting myself to perform at like top tier level y'all already know <laughs> like especially during this time of year i was just churning out content like like a fucking machine and it caused me to burn out i did a video on that back in 2021 but i don't know i part of me was just like gosh when i was operating that way i felt like i was successful and i was growing and more people were finding me so it's taken me some time to separate myself from that prior version of me. Does that make sense? Where I'm operating in a healthier way. And part of that requires breaks. Even when I was a teacher, I was the type of teacher that was not taking time off, like just carrying over PTO hours year after year after year. And at a certain point, I'm just like, why am I doing that? Like, why, why, why am I so adverse to resting, you know? Especially when I'm in a job of service that requires me to give to other people more than eight and nine hours a day. And this job, you know, literally requires me to give, I don't know, it's kind of a 24 seven thing sometimes. And I don't, dislike that because I really love what I do. It's just sometimes it can be very depleting. So I have to check myself. When it comes to the comparison part, I, I can't compare because what's for me is for me. And even despite what's been going on this year, which I will get more into if you keep watching the video, I've still been able to accomplish things on my list. And I just need to remind myself of that. For example, one thing that was really important to me is I wanted to get out more travel content because I love to travel. It's a big part of who I am. And I've been able to partner with one of my good friends with her travel company, it's called Venture in Black. And you'll see more info in my description box about it. I recently went on a trip with them to Cuba and we had just an amazing time. And this is my first brand trip, y'all. Like, y'all know how long I've been talking about having my first brand trip. So to see it finally come into fruition was just such a like, circle moment especially with my friend who i've known her for five years i saw when she started her company like she was like a good year in when she when i met her and to see how it's grown and evolved and that i can be part of that and support it it's just been beautiful we are going to dubai in march of 2024 and this is my official invite to all of you to join there'll be information in the description box about it but yes traveling is something that's very near and dear to me and the fact that i was able to go on this all expense paid trip and create content which is something i already love to do like whenever i travel i'm creating period because that's just what's in me so it really made me feel like damn gladys you you really did that and for her to see like my talent and what i can contribute really meant really meant the world to me and i'm about to go on another trip to jamaica for similar reasons so i feel like that 
means that there's only more to come in regards to the travel thing and I really want to take y'all with me on that journey. I think when it comes to vlogging, I will, I have, y'all, y'all already know. Every time I'm like, oh, I'm about to put out a travel vlog and then I'll take like six months to do it. So in 2024, I'm going to be a little bit more intentional about the travel vlogs. Like I'm not going to necessarily vlog everything. I'll probably poll you all and see like, hey, what do you all want to see first? And then just take it from there. So I can actually prioritize content because there are some times where I'm traveling more frequently and I just, I just can't do everything. I'm just one person. So that's something that's really important though that I did check off my list. And it just reminded me that I'm still receiving opportunities and the ones that I want, I can still find them I can still have them they're still for me I just been you know this has been a year of rest for me as well so I have to remind myself of that okay the next thing I want to talk about is breakups okay I've had several I'm gonna go back like maybe two years I'm gonna try to make it really quick but I um have had friendship breakups and I also broke up with my longtime partner a lot of you probably know who that is because we've filmed together on several videos we've done vlogs together you've seen her on Instagram I do ask though like if you refer to that relationship in the comments just don't use her name because I just want to have respect for that and respect for her also I ask that you avoid stating any negative assumptions about my partner I still have a lot of love and respect for them so yes Please don't make me block you. But I'm gonna talk about the friendship breakups first very quickly. That really hit me like a ton of bricks. And maybe some of y'all can relate where you have long time friendships where you know you see these people as like like a sister or a brother and it ends for maybe a multitude of reasons. In my case, I had two friends. One friend, um, we were friends since college and we've never had an argument. We were super close. Unfortunately, I expected her to be there for me in a way and she wasn't. It really hurt me and it was also around the time of COVID. So there were just other things going on. She was going through her own thing. We did talk about it, but I feel like we never came to like a full resolve and then other things kept happening in her life that honestly just took precedent. So I kind of felt like I was put on the back burner and I was trying to be understanding about it, but it really hurt me because I was like, this is a person that I've been rocking with for like since I was 19 years old. And now it's like we barely speak. I don't know how they feel about our friendship or if there's anything left of it, but it just makes me sad. Let me know in the comments if you've experienced anything similar where you and a friend maybe have just grown apart and maybe you've found some resolve with it. Maybe it's still keeps you up at night I don't know let me know I'm still kind of sorting through my feelings on that most days I'm pretty settled with it but I do miss her sometimes and with my other friendship breakup <laughs> that was that was a lot but basically she was one of my best friends in DC and we stopped talking due to uh, what I think was like a, a really big misunderstanding with someone else and it affected our friendship and that was pretty devastating for me so I don't know I just did not expect like I hear about like oh when you're in your 30s you know you start losing people I just didn't expect it to happen the way that it did and I, I wasn't I wasn't prepared and what I wasn't most prepared for is like the dissolvement of my long-term partnership that was huge it really um hmm. it really struck me this was definitely a person that I envisioned seeing myself with for a very long time and uh it didn't end up happening that way i'm not really getting into the details of like what happened but i want to just express to you like what my journey has been thus far as going through that breakup from that romantic relationship i would say in the beginning because this happened at the top of the year Y'all probably did see me post a YouTube video, but after that, I just like disappeared. And literally what happened online was happening in my personal life. I just wanted to disappear and crawl under a fucking rock. <laughs> I was so just, just felt very sad and very alone. And I felt like no one else was going through what I was going through. 
my friends were trying to support me i didn't want their support one of my very best friends would like force herself to come over and like make sure i was okay and like do things for me it just but it, it just was like i don't know i was i was really depressed for the first few months maybe like four months or so and then as it started getting warm outside i started like coming out of it you know i started going out a little bit more but i don't know y'all breakups suck <laughs> i don't like them at all I, and I, the thing is I, this is not my first rodeo y'all i've been in multiple relationships i've been in love before i've but i've it, i've just never it's never been like this this was definitely one of those relationships that like mold you and force you to grow up and <laughs> i just thought I just thought things would be different and there were a lot of things I didn't realize that I needed outside of the relationship so that was that was huge for me once I finally realized it once I also got back into therapy as well it's been it's been really really difficult y'all I'm so much better now like I'm so much better so much better especially like through therapy and just like leaning on the people closest to me because I'm the type of person, I can be very, even though I'm like very open and friendly, I don't let a lot of people in. So this was definitely a time where it's like, Gladys, you should lean on the people that care about you. You should talk to people about what you're going through. I wanted to try to talk about this with y'all back in like freaking May, but I couldn't like every time I would like do my makeup. I'm like, okay, I'm gonna go talk about it. I'm gonna go upstairs to my office where y'all see me at right now. And I would just get really sad and feel like I just couldn't do it. So uh it was a lot. That that was definitely a huge loss for me. And in retrospect i could say it was a loss that i needed to experience because i just think there were certain things i needed to learn on my own uh yeah i, <laughs> I don't know y'all this get i get really sad sometimes so um you can let me know though in the comments you know if you um have been going through a breakup of sorts or any type of loss where you're grieving someone how you've been dealing with it i think for me it's been it's i don't know what's harder grieving someone who's dead or grieving someone that's still walking the earth like sometimes i'm just like it's equally as difficult and i'm thankful that i have like close friends and my therapist to like talk through the feelings because uh, you know I felt like my heart was like broken for like at least six months um, but it's also it's it also feels different because I feel like it was a mutual decision and also I don't know I'm not gonna go into it I just I'm just trying to like really just move forward and heal from it the best way that I can. Overall, I want to sum this part of the video up by saying I experienced a love that people never experienced in a lifetime. And I'm so grateful for that. If you were ever around me and my previous partner, you probably also felt our love and genuine connection. And overall, how much we made a really great team. I'm just trying to hold on to the good that I got from that situation, from that relationship. I sometimes struggle with my part of the breakup and also just feeling like, you know, sometimes wanting to take things back, go backwards, take back the breakup, all these things. But at the end of the day, um, I've had to come to accept the decisions that were made. I listened to a podcast the other day um, by Simeon Barton called Not Just Another Sex Podcast. And she said something very poignant. She said, relationships don't fail, they end. And it really resonated with me because that's exactly what I'm realizing. Like, it wasn't a failure. It was actually a beautiful union and a partnership. I spent five years with someone that I allowed to see the innermost parts of me. There was a lot of learning, a lot of growing, a lot of evolving, a lot of sacrifice. 
a, a, just a, a lot of everything. And it's literally built me into who I am right now in a way that I can't even put into words. Honestly, I wouldn't have this YouTube channel if it wasn't for my previous partner. At this point, I am filled with gratitude when I think about all of the changes I experienced with her. Lately, one of my friends has been asking me um, if I'll be ready to date sometime soon. And I'm just like, yo, I, I don't. I, I don't know about that. I How am I supposed to date when I'm not even over my ex? You know what I mean? I don't know if I can even commit myself to someone again in the way that I committed myself to her. I, I do think I'm the type of person where love does find me very easily. It's just... <sighs> the idea of starting over is daunting and I don't know I'm 33 years old I'm turning 34 in a few weeks I know I'm still young compared to some of you I know that lord willing I still have a lot more life to live but I don't know y'all some days it just it's hard to see the light at the end of the tunnel it's hard to see you know myself married in a brand new relationship with someone other than my past partner I just, it's just, it's really hard to see. But who knows? Maybe one day it won't be. Overall, I, I really am reminded that there are so many nuances that come with the human experience. Things are not just black and white. They're not just cut and dry. And even when I think about my own experience with this huge life change going through this breakup, there's not just one easy answer that's going to magically get all of my needs met, you know? <laughs> there are some things that I just need to figure the fuck out and get right before being with someone else. The last thing I want to say before getting back to the video, and I'm so sorry this keeps going on, but I have to get this out. I know people talk about breakups as far as like, oh my God, cheating and like physical abuse and stuff like that. But I wish more people talked about Separations that happen when people just start changing, when you become different people, when you start wanting different things and what that looks like and how that shows up in a relationship. Like, can we talk more about that type of thing when it comes to relationships? Those things that happen are really hard, too. And it may, not, it may have nothing to do with an outside party. You know what I mean? <sighs> anyway, let me get off this soapbox. I just... I'm just trying to like really just move forward and heal from it the best way that I can. And I think I've been doing a pretty damn good job considering I've still been working. I've still been on Instagram and TikTok. I actually lost my TikTok account <laughs> at the top of the year, which was so, I was so fucking upset. Like I grew that account to like 27,000 followers. It took me like a year to do that shit and I just lost it. But anyway, there are multiple things happening. So I... I don't know. I just lost my train of thought. Overall, what I want you to know is that I'm better now, which is why I'm able to actually film this video without having a complete breakdown. And I would love to hear from all of you how you have survived a breakup, how you've moved on from one, you know, what life is like on the other side. I feel like now, because it's approaching a year, Yes, it's been that long. <laughs> now I feel like I'm approaching the other side of it. But we all know that growth is not a linear process. Grief is not a linear process. It literally has a bunch of mountains and molehills and valleys. Sometimes it feels never ending. Even though I have a lot of good days now and I'm able to operate as my normal self, I might have like a random hour where I'm just like, I just start crying by myself literally doing like the most random thing. I might be like in the bathroom doing my makeup. I was like walking in the street, like going somewhere. I see something that reminds me of this person. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's so fucking annoying, but I have to, my therapist tells me I have to move through, move through these emotions in order to like actually like get over it. If I, if I try to ignore it, that's gonna put me in a worse position. So really learning how to lean into my feelings has been super, super helpful. And I'm grateful because one of my close friends, like she allows me to do that. She gives me a space to like do that in a way that 
I'm not used to experiencing. The love I've received this year during this process is something that I'll never forget, honestly. Okay, so the next thing I want to talk about is the fact that I have goals in my new season. Ooh, this thing is getting dark, y'all. And <laughs> I'm looking like a little chocolate burrito right now. Let me try to lighten this up. Um, okay. So what is next for Forever Gladys? What do I want this channel to look like? Since the beginning, this channel has been all about empowering women, whether you look like me or not, to be their best selves, to try new things, and to really lean into who, who you are as a person. So that's what I wanna continue doing, no matter if I'm doing hair, if I'm showcasing my clothes, if I'm traveling to somewhere in the Caribbean, if I'm just showing how to decorate my home, like I want you to look at me and feel like, damn, if Gladys could do it, I can do it too. And spring into action. That's what I want. Some of y'all send me the most uplifting and endearing comments. It Y'all have no idea how much it makes my day. I am a words of affirmation girly. So every time that someone is able to share like, how my content helps them or has changed them it, it really causes me to pause and think like wow i'm really i'm really operating in my gift i feel like i'm operating my purpose i am definitely i don't know i just feel really honored to be in this position and i want to continue being in service to all of you while still honoring myself so one of my goals is to, when it comes to YouTube specifically, I would like to get back to posting on here twice a week. That is a goal that I have. Ooh, excuse me. How feasible is that goal? We shall see. <laughs> because I've been posting on Instagram like back to back to back, TikTok similarly. But YouTube is my baby. Like y'all you, form content is where it's at. I love watching YouTube. Lately, I've been watching a lot of podcasts over the past, what, year and a half. I barely watch wig reviews anymore. I just watch my favorites. And y'all already know who we are. I watch Kai. I watch Brittany. I watch Sherelle. But mostly, I like watching relatable stories. I like watching people talk about things that they go through and how they overcome them. And I want to insert that into my channel as well, which is why... I'm bringing back Small Talk Saturdays. And I know originally when I did Small Talk Saturdays, I did like a culmination of things, right? I started with doing YouTube, like how to grow on YouTube. I did that for a while. But I really want it to be like just us kikiing, like having a chit chat about whatever topic I choose. Ideally, I would want it to do once a week, but I, I can't. I'm gonna do it twice a month and we're just gonna take it from there. So that's one goal I have, to do Small Talk Saturdays, to post on here twice a week, I would like to have at least one vlog a month. I think that's a good thing to start with for coming back to YouTube and go from there. I think for next year, as far as like my career and finances, I want things to be better because this year I took a pay cut, a drastic pay cut due to wanting to really focus on my mental health. And that was a hard decision for me to make because even like at the beginning of the year, I started having some videos go viral and I automatically got into that mode like, oh bitch, it's time to get to work. But how am I supposed to work when I am crying my eyes out every day because I'm going through a breakup? Like you see how it's not, it's not picking up what it's putting down. So I really had to check myself and be like, girl, you need to slow it down. All. All these brand deals that you feel like you got lined up, cut it off, period. You could focus on affiliate marketing, you could do some wig sales, but you really need to take time for self. And I feel like I did a, a pretty good job doing that considering who I was before. Now that I've taken most of the year to do that, I'm ready to move on to the next chapter. And I'm ready to put this year behind me. Now mind you, it's, it hasn't been all bad. Like there's so many other things I wanna share with you all that happened that went really well this year in the midst of some of the madness. But just know that I'm just in a space where I'm ready to take my brand to the next level, whatever that's supposed to be. And I wanna take y'all with me. So 
Make sure you drop me a comment. Let me know how you're feeling about this video, this life update. If anything resonated with you, let me know. Oh my God, the sun is going down, honey. Ah! <laughs> but y'all can still see me, right? <laughs> I will have Small Talk Saturdays up again in December, so be sure to look out for that. I have hair content coming, I have fashion coming, it's the holidays, it's my birthday! What? The summer 22nd cap season was good! We about to go to Jamaica, that's gonna be a whole blast. We're going back to hedonism. <laughs> And y'all already know I did a vlog on Hito. I am gonna do another vlog too for Hito from the when I went in May. And then this trip will be a, its own separate vlog as well. Look, there's a lot of vlog content, but either way, I just want to check in. I love you. Thank you for watching. So, so much. Premiere party, if you're watching this with me, thank you so much. Catch me on Instagram, DM me, hit me on TikTok. If you wanna check out some of my other videos, you can see them over here to the right of me. Thank y'all so much for watching, Forever Fam. I love y'all, always. See you in the next video. Bye.